Hello. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for your time today. No, thank you. I'm I'm so bummed to chat with you and huge congratulations on Gravel and Gold. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's finally out. And I know Gold's been doing great up in Canada, so that feels pretty good. Yeah, I'm so pumped on Same Old Me. I am obsessed with Same Old Me right oh, now. Oh, good to hear because I'm trying to figure out the next single. I got, I got a few weeks left and uh, I've been going back forward to the same old me and, and heartbreak drinking tour. So you're on the same old me. Same old me. That's my right. <laughs> That's your jam, huh? Why do you like it so much? I wonder. Just the feel. I feel like it's classic Dirks, which I love. Yeah. I feel like it's really got your sound to it. And I just, I kind of love the message. I find like it's funny, lighthearted kind of thing. But I was yeah. just walk with my dog yesterday and I kept, I played it and then I played it again. And then I was like, okay, I just have to put repeat on because I can't just constantly after like two minutes and 30 seconds go and change that. So, uh, so I just, it was like ingrained in me and I just, I really, really like the lightheartedness of it. And again, like I said, it's classic Dirks. Thank you. I'm glad you love it. That's a, it's, I'm kind of come back around to that one. I love that song because you know, this, this whole album and my whole life in general, you feel like you're evolving and getting better at what you do or becoming more conscious and, you know, just like evolving as a human being. And then you realize you're still on the same bus. I'm on the same bus I've always been on. I've still got the same band, guys. I still love being on stage playing country music. I still love drinking a good beer. It's a lot of things haven't changed after all this time. I'm, for better or for worse, <laughs> I'm still the same old me. And so that song is really, uh, I just love it. It's, that's how I kick off the album is with that that song. Yeah, I think it was a good kickoff, too, because I think that's either the second or first track. Uh, First track, yeah. Yeah, first track. So I think it's a good intro to setting the tone, and it bodes well for the rest of the album. And what I love about the album, too, is that you had that love ballad to Colorado, which I Mm. I find so beautiful. I mean, living in the mountains here in Canada, I think I really love it to that but then it also had a few heartbreak anthems and you know some fun drinking songs as well so it is this really fun album but i i am interested to find out how the process of writing was because you took a few years off to kind of focus on your family and quality of life and just get outside and like enjoy yourself and not feel the need and pressure to deliver uh you know back to back to back so how was it kind of getting back into the studio and, and getting into that? Yeah, it was quite the uh, kind of restart to get back in the studio because when I was in Colorado when the pandemic hit and we ended up just staying where we were. We had a house out there and uh, this little little small house with all, all this t- three kids and three dogs uh, packed in there. A lot of hockey gear to walk over. <laughs> as, as I always say the house was held gear and we kind of like lived amongst the gear because there's skis and snowboards and hockeys and Crazy, but uh, we lived there for a year, and um, I really uh, did not play much music at all or think about much music. I was too busy camping and hiking and fishing and skiing and whatnot, Nordic. And um, But I kind of started thinking about that towards the end of that year. I would Zoomed a few writes, and I had some songs collected, and I did a, a big writer's <clears throat> retreat at the beginning of 21 out in Colorado and got a bunch of songs and just collecting songs and went to the studio when I got back to Nashville in March of 21. And it just, yeah, it's kind of a hard to kind of get back into it. You know, people were still wearing masks and still had the testing going on, COVID testing. And it was like, well, it's not as easy as I remember being, you had to like just come up with, you know, hooks and, and parts and, and solos. And it was just, it was a really good way to get going again, but I realized pretty early on, it probably wasn't going to be the album. And so I waited a few months, went back in with a different producer and it was feeling pretty good there too, but not just, I just wasn't ready to make the album yet. You know, it's, uh, and I put a couple of songs out to kind of delay the process. I put out Gone. I put out Beers on Me to kind of buy more time. Uh, when I went back in the studio in 22, I just I decided to produce it myself and and call the musicians. I put together a great team of musicians in a studio, and uh, and I brought some more producers in to help me kind of realize the goal. And yeah, I, I think what I ended up doing is making an album that's a collection of all these different sounds and and styles I've had over the years. Uh, it's my tenth album, so. I want to get the stuff people know about me on the radio, but also the bluegrass and the traditional country and kind of the fun songs and kind of have them all into one place where it feels like a, a compilation of my, of all my sounds and styles. And um, it, it couldn't have turned out, turned out any better, but it was, it was art. The whole process was, it was long. Uh, it was long until it wasn't, you know, then it was fun when I finally had the right team and the right songs and the right conditions. And it's like, ah, oh, this is it. This is what we've been looking for. 
like you felt the flow after a while, you know? Just yeah, kind of but it took about three out. years to find the flow. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? What what shifted with you that gained that that spark back? What do you think was do you think it was because you took that time off and you needed that break? And just again, like that quality of life, because it's so important of that work life balance. Do you think experiencing all those things gave you that spark to want to um, write more music and get back in the studio? Or do you think it was like, I kind of like retirement. <laughs> I yeah. was like, why not just stay here? Yeah. No, I was, yeah, I mean, in all honesty, yeah, I was ready. I was done. I mean, I, I was ready to kind of find that second curve in life. I, you know, I was in a place where, yeah, you know, where nobody cares what you do. You know, they all, all they ask about is what you did that day. You know, did you go for, did you ski? Did you hike? Did you bike? Did you raft? Like, what did you, what did you do today? You know, it's like, that's, I love that. <laughs> that was great. I mean, I didn't, nobody knows. I don't really know a lot of my friends do out there and they really know what I did. So it was, it was good. Um, but my wife and two of my kids really wanted to come back to Nashville. So we did. And uh, unfortunately I live in a democracy at my house, and, uh, <laughs> but when we came back, we moved into a much smaller house near walkable to stuff and no fences or gates or anything, you know, just park on the street. And it was just a lot, remind me a lot of the house I had out there in Colorado and, just community and vibe. And it just kind of changed my perspective on Nashville. And I realized how much I'd missed a lot of my friends here and the, the songwriting community and the musicians and the studios and just my friends here in general. So it was kind of a, it was, you know, like the song talks about gravel and gold, you know, you can kind of, from one perspective, it looks like gravel and from another, the right attitude that gravel can look like gold. So I just needed a little bit to change my perspective and, and uh, just to realize how much I really had missed and, and love Nashville. Well, we're glad you got that second win. Like, cause like I said, I, I love the album. So I'm so happy Thanks. after a few tries of you, yeah, you didn't rush it and you stuck to your gut on that because I think that's so important, especially as a songwriter to feel confident and feel good about what you're putting out. And I feel like there can be some big name artists there out in country that kind of just put stuff out because that's what they're expected to do, you know? And you're like, yeah. I don't know if that's their best work, you know? <laughs> I don't know if that's what they are putting out. But so I so respect the fact that you're like, I'd rather hold off and have some integrity behind this song. Yeah, yeah. well, I appreciate you saying that because um, that's really how I feel. I mean, I've done a lot of interviews today. It's I, I get a chance to talk to a lot of people and it'd be a big waste of everybody's time and super inauthentic if I was just out here promoting some, you know, record that just went in there and, cut a bunch of other people's songs and there's no theme to it and no thought mm -hmm. behind it and just churning out product to go back out there in the road. It's really, I don't have any interest in doing that. Um, I, it just, that would just be a big waste of time. So it has to be something I'm super passionate about, which means this record going to the studio three different times and spend a bunch of money to, to get it right. But I just, I want to make sure I put out something that was really, um, you know, special to me. I, you know, I don't even know if people even make albums anymore. You know? so mm -hmm. I, I, some guy texts me the other day. He's like, man, I'm cranking your music at the house. I'm so excited for the new album. I'm like, well, let me send you a, a CD, you know, and yeah, yeah. go back. He's like, I don't, he's like, I don't even, I don't even know where I'd, where I'd, where I'd, where I'd play the CD. I'm like, oh, that's right. You're, you know, I still have CD players in my trucks, but <laughs> uh, so it's, it's weird making albums. is kind of a weird deal because, you know, it, it, everyone just streams and, it's a whole different world, but I'm still trying to make albums that, you know, at least for me, I can look back on it. And be like, that's a complete body of work that has a, yeah. a story to tell and a theme. We do have to wrap up, but I really want to get this one question out there. You were one of the first kind of country artists to have a country bar in in Nashville. And and I think you also do, do is it um, Arizona as well? Or yeah, Scottsdale. Arizona, yeah, Denver. Yeah. And, yeah, sure, um, yeah. and you were kind of one of the first, obviously you're wearing the risky whiskey row cap right there. And now it's like such a thing where every country artist kind of has it, but mm -hmm. I feel like yours is, is so much fun. I love going to whiskey row. Uh, anytime I'm out there, what kind of sets yours apart from the other, uh, country bars that you've seen from different artists and have you gone and visited them and, you know, oh, great question. Yeah. Yeah. I have not been to many of the other people. I've been to Miranda's a few times. And here's this really cool. I love the vibe. It's, just, it's a really cool spot. But um, yeah, I don't know why people, I feel like ours gets a good reputation for being, you know, cool or whatever. I don't, it's and authentic. It's, and authentic. Yeah. There's not too much like memorabilia of me around. There's some stuff there, but it's not really like meant to be like a museum. It's meant to be, meant to be a place to party. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that comes with like the music. You know, the first floor is, um, a lot of bands and singer songwriters down there. The second floor starts off kind of country, but by the time 
eight o'clock rolls around, it's it's DJ driven. It's a party, and we got these road plates for tables, and everyone is up on the road plates dancing, and that's <laughs> just kind of good feng shui. The guy, my buddy Ryan Hibbert, who puts this stuff together, he just he just knows how to do it, and it's just a a fun vibe in there. It's uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's not. It, it's just it's has a little, little bit different cutter. take on it. What's yeah. that? It's not cookie cutter. It's, it's not very cookie cutter. Authentic in that way, where sometimes you can go to those and you're like, okay, it's another country bar, but there's something about whiskey row. Yeah, there's, they do the a good job country. of keeping it a certain a certain way. So I, I appreciate that, and that's been fun. We got four or five of them around the country, and uh, and hopefully open up a few more. And uh, it's just been a, a nice little side thing. Yeah, I love it. Well, thanks so much for your time thanks. Uh, today. Thanks, Kristen. So appreciate it. And uh, yeah, can't wait for the album. And same old me has my vote. So you know. Thank that. you. I appreciate it. Same, that's <laughs> the vote care. for same old me. Okay, <laughs> take care. Bye. Bye.